Go ask your brother. Hello again, after months of silence, uh, two in a row. I wanted to uh, take what we talked about in the last uh, video one step further. Uh, we set up previously, we went through how to set up MIDI devices, and now, and that was the critical first step because now I want to show you how that dovetails into using external devices. So if we come under the devices menu, come down to, of all things, VST connections. Um, now the input and output tabs you're probably already very familiar with, but check out this, the external instruments tab. Um, what we're going to do is create an external instrument for uh, the stuff we did yesterday or whenever it was you watched the video. And so we'll click the button that says Add External Instrument. And the first thing it wants is a name, and I'm going to call this uh, the D110 because I actually have one of those. And, <clears throat> excuse me, below this we can set up how many mono or stereo returns uh, we want, and this relates to uh, the audio interface you're using and how you've got it configured. So for this, uh, I only need, the way I've got it set up, I only need one stereo return. And this is the key button, associate MIDI device, and this is why we set up the MIDI device first, and now we're finalizing the project, because you're, you're going to love this, how easy this makes stuff. Because um, remember yesterday, when, or in the last video, when I said you always have to have a MIDI track and an audio track, and twos, I lied. Uh, but remember, I also said that's, that dynamic is what gave birth to the concept of the instrument track. Okay, that was, that was the truth. <laughs> and you're going to see what I mean in just a second. So um, click Associate MIDI Devices. I'm going to drop down this line. Um, and it wouldn't do me any good to use this one because that we just built yesterday as a demo. But I'm going to click uh, the D110 and then OK. Now, what the uh, program does here, what Cubase does, is automatically sets up uh, this workspace or this window so that you can predefine all of your bus connections. And I, I should say at the outset, out over here to the side, I have uh, 16 different inputs flowing into my rig. And rather than having a big external mixing board sitting on the desk, I have two rack mount interfaces. And every piece of external equipment has its own dedicated slots or plugs in the audio interface. And then all my mixing is done in Cubase. So that'll make more sense in just a second. I'm going to click on the Yamaha Steinberg interface. I'm going to say that's the audio device to use. Then over here, um, I need to tell it which ports to use. And you can see from this menu that I've already gone through and named all the ports in my audio interface to line up to what's, so it lines up with what's actually plugged into them. So I will obviously pick the D110 left and D110 right. I thought I said left. What part of that was unclear? What in the world? Okay, something's... I don't know why all that just happened, but anyway. So what we've done is, by setting those device ports here, what we're doing is we're telling Cubase, any time that we call up this external instrument, automatically go and look at those two uh, input ports for the sound coming back. Because remember, in, uh, we need a MIDI component for the data going out, and then we need an audio feed for the uh, sound coming back in. So we've got all that done. <laughs> Excuse me. These other three columns over here, delay, return gain, and device, um, you could actually reassign stuff here if you wanted to. Look at that. You can even create a device. Didn't know that. Um, if you had a, an external piece of gear that was real slow, I guess, and was introducing some latency, if you enter that value here, Cubase could make some magic happen in the background and correct for it. That's not an issue with anything you or I are using. And then you could actually tell it how to boost or cut the return gain so that it flows in at the right level. And I'm just going to leave this at zero or unity because that's likely to be uh, ideal. So we've got all that done. Really, then all we have to do is just uh, close this. Now, here's where this gets really cool. 
So I've got a blank project open. I'm going to right click over here and remember I said yesterday add a MIDI track and an audio track. That was that was the lie. I'm just going to add an instrument track. And check this out. Look what we have here. In addition to all of the uh, standard PST stuff, look at that. There is now in the plugin section an instrument track instrument for uh, D110. And if you had um, five external instruments set up, they would all appear here. So I'm just going to pick that out and hit add track. And look at this. We get one nice, clean, easy to use instrument track. And so you don't have that paired MIDI and audio thing. They're, it's doing it in the background for you. And it opened the uh, device right here for us. And now, uh, in fact, look look over here in the inspector. You can see that the um, the MIDI output is selected to uh, D110, and it's even got those presets here. And those so cool. The presets line up with patch for patch with everything that's in there. And with this track selected, excuse me, and that's coming through these, but you probably can't hear that. But all of that. Uh, it's all working in, in one click, just as easy as if we had used uh, any of the other built-in BST instruments. That's the key. The other thing I wanted to point out is anytime you're uh, working with external devices, and oh, let me show you one other thing, and this one will be less than 20 minutes long. There's also a tab here for external effects. Uh, and Carter, I know in your studio, I don't think you're using anything external at the moment. Um, I think the stuff in Cubase is better than anything I ever had in the rack. But if you had some magic box uh, that you wanted to use for your killer reverb or whatever, um, you can go through essentially the same steps and set up an external effects device here, which is going to automatically pair up the audio routing and uh, I'll make all the gain and delay compensation. And then you can add your external thing in just like any of the other built-in effects that come packaged with Cubase. So anyway... The one other thing with using anything external, when you get ready to export, you come over here to File Menu, Export, uh, you know, Audio Mix Down, just like normal. There's two two settings you need to check. One is this uh, real time export needs to be checked, and then you want to actually disable this one, dis where it says deactivate external MIDI inputs. Turn that off and turn real time export on. And I think that's self explanatory, but. Um, by default, this is unchecked. So when you hit export, right, it just goes whoop, and you're done in 15 seconds, even if it's like a 10 minute song. Uh, if you're using external stuff, Cubase actually has to play the MIDI notes in real time to the keyboard and then it has to receive the audio back and record that. So everything has to happen like in the olden days. So you need to click uh, real time export. And then if you're mixing down or exporting a four minute song, this process is going to take four minutes because it's going to play through it and so forth. Anyway, you get that. Um, so make sure those two settings are, uh, I had to, couldn't just say two, had to do that. Uh, those two settings are appropriate and you should have good luck. So if you use this setup technique with the uh, MIDI device that we built last time, uh, you should be able to really start wrapping in your external gear and using that uh, seamlessly inside Cubase. So hope that helps. Talk to you soon.